I'm getting crazy here, guys. These are functioning sunroofs. I won't do that again. That, that, that gives me the willies. And it's exactly that, guys and gals. That's a rear frame. This truck has a rear frame. It also has absolutely no rust in all or any of the common spots that affect these trucks so terribly. And look at those body mounts. And maybe some of you initially gawked at me saying that this truck is worth, you know, between 10 and 13 grand or something like that. But, you know, you can replace mechanicals. Sure, you can replace a frame, but why would you do that? At the price of a frame these days, it's pretty unreal. And this is just, you know, spotless under here. Absolutely spotless. There is also other potential brand entry points, an LR2 or even a Freelance. Howdy, and welcome to the Back to Addicted Motors YouTube channel. And today, what we're going to be talking about is why Land Rovers make bad new cars, but awesome used cars, which is not really what most people say when it comes to, uh, you know, how to handle a brand. And we're going to talk about this particular D2, which is actually for sale. So let's check it out. Now, there's a few stages of Land Rover Range Rover ownership that we need to discuss. Most people, if they don't initially buy a brand new Range Rover or Land Rover, start out with something like this, an older D1, D2, or Range Rover Classic. Or, if they're more, a little more interesting, a Spicy Boy P38. There is also other potential brand entry points, an LR2 or even a Freelander. Both of which probably, well, maybe on more on the Freelander side, probably ended in disaster and then no longer and then a divorce from the, uh, the Rover brand. If you purchase an LR2, you actually realize that it was a pretty reliable, decent vehicle, and then either upgraded or downgraded to a newer or older model, just depending on what uh, your lifestyle was and what you're looking to get into. Now, another way to handle it is starting at the bottom and working your way up and then hitting a crest and realizing you need to work your way back down. Now, that's what I've done. I initially purchased a very cheap, really beat up and rusty Range Rover Classic. Uh, from there, we had a bunch of D1s, D2s, even a P38. And then we went to an L322 and an LR3. Then an L405. And then, well, that's the, that's the history of vehicles that we've kind of personally purchased. But we've seen the issues and some of the, uh, I guess, the more <laughs> interesting, less DIYable problems that can really plague the newer vehicles. Now all newer vehicles have issues, but when it comes to newer Land Rovers and the past few years of parts shortages, um, I can say talent shortages and other sorts of things, the newer models such as the new Defender and new L405s when it have parts issues when it comes to availability. The D5s have windshield leaks. Just These are things that, yeah, the dealer will give you a, a loaner car or whatnot, but you're 70 to 100 and some thousand dollar vehicle will be sitting there for months and months and months and you won't be able to drive it while you're making payments on it and some people you know even though they're getting a loaner that's just not what they want they bought the car they want to use it now that's not everyone's experience and most people have no no issues with this they love the brand they love the vehicles and i you know once you drive something like a newer land rover an older land rover you do get hooked but for the average consumer that's not always the fun part. Well, that brings me back to the point of this video. Why Land Rovers make better used vehicles than new vehicles? And the key factor there is depreciation. This particular D2 costs $42,000 new in 2001 or 2002, whenever it was sold. I've got the window sticker, which is like 60 some, almost, yeah, 60 something thousand dollars. Most importantly, like an old series truck, uh, D1, D2, or classic, you can almost maintain it completely yourself. There's enough information, forums, Facebook groups, um, aftermarket parts uh, groups, either abroad or in the States, um, as well as the community, that can 100% support the long-term maintenance of an older Land Rover. And, you know, granted, or not holding the frame rusting out completely or a bent frame, and you can even buy frames, you know, you really can't kill them. I mean, financially, they can kill you, but you know, as far as the actual truck, you can keep them alive for a pretty long time. 
and keep it aligned without any crazy special tools. It's a lot of shade tree mechanic stuff can still be done, which again, still kind of falls into that automotive uh, esprit de corps, you could say, of uh, maintaining and enjoying older vehicles. Now, in the past 20 plus years of depreciation, that value has gone all the way down and then slowly risen back up, but it's not an unattainable amount. This particular D2, and I'll run through the specs and whatnot, is, is I'll list it on Facebook Marketplace probably for, uh, you know, 11 to 12, five is depending on, you know, what other uh, work it needs and whatnot. But right now it needs nothing. Now, when you buy a newer model, of course, you get the latest technology, but the latest technology brings lots of problems. And again, I'm not saying it's gonna plague every vehicle and it's not gonna be the end of the world. And for the average person who can shell out and afford that money, that's absolutely fine. You're not the ones watching this video. It's the people that probably can't <laughs> or don't want to spend a hundred and some thousand dollars on something that will potentially cost them a lot of additional heartache and not the fun kind of heartache. Jeremy Clarkson once made the point about the uh, L3, L322.3, I guess you want to call it, the five liter supercharged with the upgraded electronics and whatnot that suffer from the same type of battery drain brick related issues that the new defenders do. Because when, when you open and close the door, you touch anything, it fires up all the ECUs all the modules and whatnot, which really drain the battery or can drain the battery if you're not very, you're not staying on top of it a lot quicker than you might realize. It can completely brick the vehicle. And when it's completely bricked, uh, it's uh, sometimes, maybe not with an L322, a new Defender, you, you cannot jump it. The parking brake manually in, or automatically engages. There's all these little things that can just completely strand you. And, you know, making something as simple or was once as simple as a dead battery be extremely, you know, I, I'm not even say annoying, almost, you know, potentially life-threatening if you're taking this on a trip with a family out in the woods, on a trail, wherever, or even in the city, it doesn't matter. Another point about the older Range Rover, Land Rover, Series, Defenders, whatever class you want to put them in is, is they're also almost completely timeless and classless. Um, you know, they're, they're owned and operated by every type of person from every type of financial situation or generational, either it's a hand-me-down car or you're getting to it for the first time or you stumbled upon it, you didn't know what it was, but now you have it and you have to figure it out. Everyone goes through the exact same issues and that can be said for any brand, but you know, they're also you know, immediately recognizable and they kind of made the brand what it is for the better or for the worst. These things weren't great when they came out, but you know, maybe in 15 years, we might think that the L405 and new Defender is the greatest thing since the old one, I don't know. So I'm getting into the weeds, but that's where some people go because they either start at the bottom and they work their way up and then they realize that they don't really enjoy the way up and then they work their way back down or they start at the top and work their way back down and realize they want to stay there or can have or can afford both. And I think that's going to be the best of both worlds. I mean, there's a lot of people in that situation. You've got, you know, a newer supercharged sport and then you have a couple D1s to run around in, or if you're smart, you just buy an F-250 and an old D1 and you can just tow all your toys around. But let's talk about this particular D2 because that's why we're here and that's probably what you want to see, guys. So this is, I did a video on this D2 before, back when it had an issue, which has since been fixed. And it was a front diff issue and it, they unfortunately had been given a used diff that was in poor condition and replicated the same issue. So this one's back. So let's run through the specs. It's a one owner, rust free, Virginia truck with 97,000 miles and absolutely no rust. And I say that very sincerely. I've not pulled the carpets up, but there's absolutely no sign of rust. And we'll show you the underside here in a second. Now, again, this would not have been a vehicle or a price point that I would have even looked at a few years ago. But now the fact that I have my super off-road centric models and whatnot, uh, and I've scratched that itch, this falls into a different category of a completely stock wonderfully running and driving example of an original D2. So this one has new tires, has new brakes, it has a new front drive shaft, has a new front diff, it has had an oil change, it has ACE, it has power seats, it has heated seats, it has a uh, the heated windshield, it has all the lights work. No, there's no lights on the dash. 
even the little, not fog lights, but the little uh, driving lights or city lights, if you want to call them inside, these clear glass lenses work perfectly. The gray paint looks great. The mud flaps are intact. The, the side rails are intact. The mirrors are not faded. The paint has some scratches and whatnot, but it's not completely faded. There's a little tiny slight fade that can buff down the roof. But that's about it. Oh yeah, and both these sunroofs. And if you're work. around these type of vehicles, this type of, I guess I would call it, maintained time capsule doesn't exist. And it's not really even how it looks, but it's more about how it drives. But before we get there, here's what you're here for, the underside. Now my lens was foggy in the last shot, but look at this. Un unreal. Unreal. And it's exactly that, guys and gals. That's a rear frame. This truck has a rear frame. It also has absolutely no rust in all or any of the common spots that affect these trucks so terribly. And look at those body mounts. And maybe some of you initially gawked at me saying that this truck is worth, you know, between 10 and 13 grand or something like that. But, you know, you can replace mechanicals. Sure, you can replace a frame, but why would you do that? At the price of a frame these days, it's pretty unreal. And this is just, you know, spotless under here. Absolutely spotless. Factory. I don't want to sound like a used car salesman, people, but if you've, if you've seen what bad looks like, um, then this is a pretty uh, stark example of what good looks like. This is the benchmark. And, uh, and again, you know, seeing things like that, absolutely no rust, how clean it is underneath. It, it makes the, I guess, investment, even though that's not that much money in comparison to over $200,000 for a new one or a new Range Rover. I'm sure a new um, D5 eclipses 90 to well, probably 100 grand for whichever one you want. Um, and it does, I mean, it, it's, you really can't compare the two. All right, pop the hood, check out on the engine bay. Look at the side of that motor. Exhaust manifold, starter, O2 sensors, drive shaft, everything just looks great. It looks, you know, it, it looks, looks like you opened up any type of normal car and not the kind of rust plague, exhaust leak, Land Rover, Range Rover that you're really used to seeing. I mean, even the boot is not completely cracked in the air intake. Again, this truck has ace, has no lights on. You know, let's uh, let's fire it up. I literally just moved it here, so it's pretty much a cold start. But I can do it. Let's fire it up. Listen to it run. Engine is uh, it's about as cold as it gets. Fires right up, going through the startup cycle. No ticking, knocking, anything. I mean, again, 94, 97,000 miles. There it goes, idling down. Swing around to the interior. Gas lights on because we're on an incline. 97,000 miles dead cold real quick take you through the interior again interior i'd probably put about a seven out of ten if ten's absolutely perfect i mean seats are in great shape there's some scuffs here there's some some scuffs on the driver's seat um headliners in good condition but a little sag here and there nothing too bad um the the buttons the backing plate has a, has a crack in it so you have to kind of maintain that little stuff but the radio works the ac works the heat works the heated seats work all the windows work even the window lock works which when it's locked the little lights on the rear switches do not illuminate indicating that they are locked i'm getting crazy here guys these are functioning sunroofs i won't do that again that 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 gives me the willies coming around back you got the rear mat uh, it's not an SE7, but you have the cargo net, you've got the outlet and uh, everything else. So, I mean, this is, it's complete. I have the original window sticker and all the documentation that goes with it as well. All right, put it in drive. No hesitation, no lash, no, uh, no delay. 
auto locks work right off the bat and they all work. Two keys, two clickers. Of course the buttons need to be replaced, but that's per usual, I guess. Um, no crazy noises. The noise before was the bad diff, so that's completely gone. So it's very silent in here. I have the window down. Um, and it's just a nice smooth ride. I think I've said it so many times. This truck is a 2000 or 2001, so it doesn't have the uh, manually locking center transfer case, um, but it is an early model, it's a 2000, so you can retrofit the lever or drill a hole to actuate it with you know, an extension, whatever you wanna do, if you care. But this truck also doesn't have three Amigos on. And the real winner here, or the real standout feature this truck has is Ace. And that is, uh, you know, kind of a hydraulic-ish um, or a dynamic suspension management system that adds a little bit of pressure to each of the four corners independently um, that kind of keeps the truck handling very flat, which is very nice. But runs, drives, shifts very smoothly. The interior is a nice place to be. Everything works. I don't really know what else to say. It's a very lovely driving experience. This is your daily Rover. It's not your off-road Rover. It's not your go pound the trails Rover. This is the Rover to complement the other Rovers. This is the Rover you get when you want something a little more interesting than the new Rover that you might be bored in. Um, and it just kind of checks that boxy nostalgic uh, box um, very well because anyone can just get in and drive this. You're not staring at the temp gauge and it's just a lot more livable place to be than let's say, you know, Range Rover Classic or something. You know, it feels modern enough that anyone can drive this. Uh, and, that, and that just makes it that much more usable, which I think makes this incredibly appealing. So I'll bump the contrast to the video up. We'll do another walk around. And, uh, you know, can't make that up. Oh, there's the, there's the city lights, just kind of, that small little bulb. Just adds a little bit of oomph to it. Oh yeah, brand new tires, brakes. It all, it's all very sorted and feels nice. Has the tow package too. Just idling nicely, very quiet. Cali converters and everything is in place as it should. Could use a good buff, right? But I mean, most of these trucks do. And there it is. I don't have really much else to say. I wish I could keep it. It's 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 something that I wish Cindy uh, would take over the Volvo, but the Volvo, uh, it's, it's an absolute throwaway car for us and it just serves that purpose better than something that I would care about, which I would, I already care too much about. So it's, an, it's a lovely truck. Um, again, I'm going to probably post it formally for 12.5 in the next couple days. If you're interested, from this video, shoot me an email, addicted.motors.us at gmail.com, and we can talk. Like I said, I think I've showed pretty much everything in the video. Um, the only thing I didn't show was the original window, st window sticker and a lot of the documentation that kind of went with the truck beforehand. Um, but I think that's it to it. If you want to know how I would drive it across the country, it's it really is good to go. I've probably put 150 miles on it in the past couple of days and it's been absolutely flawless. And because someone will ask, there's 100% up to temp, idling nicely, not really what, not really much else to show and I'll even put that in drive. And so that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. It's been a pleasure to drive this truck around and I probably will continue to do so until it sells. And uh, you know, a great car to have with winter upcoming and not have to worry about any type of rustage. So thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe to all that fun YouTube stuff. And we'll catch you on the next video. Please share the rest of my channel for some of the most Range Rover, Land Rover centric content on YouTube or, or follow me on Instagram. It's really awesome to, uh, I have a lot more going on there as far as story updates and what's going on with the shop and other sales cars. We've got a 74 E-Type uh, Cabriolet, not Cabriolet. Roadster, four-speed V12 that's going on Bring a Trailer in British Racing Green next week. So that's going to be exciting. So I'll probably post it about that in a little bit. Thank you for watching. I'm blocking traffic. I'm going to make a, a, a more in-depth video on it coming up. But in case anybody was looking to move into something quickly, like I said, he spent thousands and thousands of dollars on it, which is what happens to most Land River owners. And he has no, no hurry to sell it, just maybe looking for something different. Uh, maybe something a little bit older, more of an off-road focused toy. 
Um, so if you're interested, let me know. He's looking for around 10 grand. Um, again, he's put uh, thousands into getting it to where it is right now. So I don't think the price is unreasonable. So um, if you're interested, again, let me know uh, in the comments or drop a, um, me an email, addicted.motors.us uh, at gmail.com. So thanks. Bye.